So there is a lien holder contingency. Now, down at the bottom of page 199, these are two forms, and this is how we actually novate the contract. Remember, we just talked a minute ago, novation, parties stay the same, contract changes. Nobody asked how we change the contract. Here's how we do it. We have two forms. One is called an amendment. And an amendment, which guess what it does? It amends language we've already talked about. This is the most common way to do it. We agreed on closing on May the 30th. Both of our clients are in Hawaii golfing. So we are going to change it to July the 10th or June the 10th, April, May, June. Yeah, May, June the 10th. You would send me an amendment amending the date from May the 30th to June the 10th. An amendment changes language we have already discussed. Purchase price, we're going to amend the purchase price from 100 to 97. We're going to amend the closing date we've already discussed, May the 30th to June the 10th. The second way is a form called an addendum. Addendum. This will add verbiage we have not talked about, such as in our purchase agreement, we don't typically talk about keeping the pool table or the swing set or the washer and dryer. So we would add that to the purchase agreement through an addendum. Amendment, addendum. Amend changes things we've talked about. An addendum is an add-on, an additional add stuff we haven't talked about in the contract. All right? So those are the two forms that you use to novate the contract. How are we feeling? We're about halfway done. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so now I know why they don't do comedy virtual. This is way too hard to do it in live. It's a lot easier. Didn't say I was good. I just said it was easier. Over on page uh, 200, disclosures. We have disclosure forms. We're going to talk about them. Lead-based paint disclosure. We have the seller's disclosure, which the seller is telling the buyer the condition of the property. Hey, the roof's good. The uh, garbage disposal works. The floors are okay. There's no cracks in the foundation. So we have all kinds of disclosures that we will touch on individually in different chapters. The option, the option is the only unilateral contract that real estate uses. I just saw a rabbit go by, I think. It was a white rabbit. That's Alana. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, the other day I was sitting in my basement and I'm sitting here and it was, well, I forget what day, Saturday, Sunday, remember it was so good. I had my door open, letting the breeze come in, and the neighbor's damn dog walked in my basement. And you ever see like something out of the corner of your eye? And I'm like, holy, and I literally thought it was like a wolf at first because it was a big German shepherd. And I saw it out of the corner of my eye. And then you're like, oh yeah, get out of here. And the dog took off, but it li literally scared the crap out of me because all I saw was this big animal walk in my door of my basement while I'm sitting here. So that's what I just saw, this white streak go shooting by in this bunny outfit, it looked like. Uh, options we've talked about. The only unilateral contract we use. Boy, I've said that four or five times. I wonder if there's a reason for that. 
It's the only unilateral contract we use in real estate. Only one person has to act. Now, the last thing I want to talk about and touch on right now is another one of my pet peeves. And I told you that I have so many pet peeves, I number them. This one's probably in the top five. All right. And I've said this many, many times. Verbiage is very important. There is no such animal as a rent to own. All right. There is no way you pay rent and own something. Those words don't go together. Those concepts don't go together. When people say rent to own, that is usually a scammer trying to take advantage of an uneducated person because you cannot rent to own. It has to be a lease to own, right? No, rent and lease is the same thing. Rents the money, leases the contract. Lease and rent go with landlord and tenant. All right, so we've got this thing that we've talked about called the grantee and a grantor, buyer and seller. When does the property ownership transfer? How quickly? It transfers like this, right? Boom. Boop. So the property transfer is instant. We have these other words down here. Lessor and let's see trick question when does the property transfer here trick question the answer is Duh. never there is no such thing as renting and owning they don't go together now the owner can finance the sale through owner financing that is called a land contract. But because it a land contract does not happen instant and it doesn't happen never, we actually have new terms to learn today. It is called a vendor and a vendee. The transfer of property, oops, Let's start, try that again. The transfer happens over time. Grantor, grantee, whoop, happens instantly. Less or less e happens never. There's a new one where the owner can finance the sale. This is called a land contract and it happens over time. All right. So here's a visual, visual joke. You ready? On the sale, you've got the grantor and the grantee. Here's how the property transfers. Boop. Like that. All right. We'll see it again. It's a magic trick. Nothing up my sleeves. Boop. All in one motion. In a lease, here's the property transfer. You ready? You want to see it again? Here it goes. Watch. Oh, wait. There is no transfer of ownership. But what we now have is this new one where ownership does this. And the ownership changes based on the amount of monthly payments the person makes. 
based on the amount of equity the person is getting. It is called a land contract. It's called a land contract. The vendee, I'm gonna erase some of this, get out of the way. The vendee gets what's called equitable title. Means he has a interest in the property and the way to remember it is his interest is based on the amount of equity that he's paid. The vendor still has actual title it's still in his name and if you recall back to one of the things we talked about when i said owner of record versus owner i said being on record has no legality of ownership here's an example the owner of record would be the vendor when you pulled the title it would show the vendor's name bob smith but that doesn't mean that the vendee who has been paying into bob does not have an interest in it. So he, in fact, does have title, but it's equitable because it's based on money he's paid in, not actual title. All right. The vendee also has, which is the most important thing, the vendee also has possession because that's what he's really wanting. And then once the vendee pays all of the money that they've agreed to to the vendor, then the vendor transfers actual title to him. This is called owner financing or a land contract. It is not a lease. It is not rent payments. Rents are words that go with lessor and lessee. Now, you can have a lease, Cameron, with an option to buy it at the end. That's called a lease option. Or if you transfer ownership based upon a monthly payment, that is called a land contract. So the only two animals you can have, lease option or land contract. There is no lease to own or rent to own. Those words cannot go together. It's like saying the president of an LLC. Those don't go together. Quick question, which is more profitable, a land contract or a lease option? Yes. No, like, <laughs> wait. It just yes, depends. <clears throat> no, answer is, I don't know, it depends. There are different facets to both of them. In a land contract, for example, you who are the vendee and I'm the vendor, you may be paying the rent and the, are the, uh, I misspoke, forget that word. I meant to say real estate taxes. You could be paying the real estate taxes and the HOA and the property insurance and all of that. Whereas if you were my tenant, I would be paying the HOA and just taking it out of my rent that I charge you. So there could be different. Now, here's the downside. If you are a tenant and you mess up, I can evict you in small claims court in three weeks. If you are a vendee, you have an equitable interest in the property. I have to foreclose upon you to get the property back. As the vendor, and you fail to make your payments, I would have to take you to foreclosure court to get back the interest that you have earned or paid for over the last year and a half. So there's a downside to you, depending on. So literally, I tell my investors, sell on a lease option so that if they screw up, we can evict them 
as a tenant, but buy everything on a land contract. That way, if you screw up, that person has to foreclose upon you, which is way more, way more financially burdensome and way more time length. So it's definitely situational based. Yeah, it's situational. That's why I said when you asked the question, I said yes. Which one's more beneficial? The answer is yes. It depends. What do I want to do as the owner of the property? If I really want to divest myself and I don't want to burden myself with paying the taxes and the insurance, I may sell it to you, Cameron, on a land contract. But if I want to create a passive income and I have no problem managing it, then I may just say, I want to lease it to you. And then I'll give you an option at the end of the lease to exercise or not. You could walk away either way because it's an option. All right. Thumbs up. All right. Any questions on chapter 13? Look. All right, hold on a second. 